afternoon and uh, thank you, Mr. Malhotra. Uh, if I've not made it uh, thus far in my life, I'm not going to make it now. So, it's <laughs> uh, what is an old-fashioned professor of chemistry doing at an HR conference? I think. Uh, let me begin by saying that uh, it is important that there be some representation of higher education and that to higher technical education at an event such as this. And uh, you know, listening to the speakers as well as the panel discussion in the first session, there were many terms that I heard which are some of the things that we've been uh, dealing with. And I will get to the topic of the lecture uh, in a minute. So there was motivation change and readiness to adapt, evolve, get over your fear of change. These were from Mr. Chetan Bhagat. And on the panel discussion, we heard skill shortages, upskilling, supply side challenge, fight for recruiting skills, attrition, prediction of skill requirements, ability to learn, talent and learning, close to the customer, is integrate what is important to the customer, cognitive skills, problem solving, creative and critical thinking, communication and so on. And I think the subject matter of uh, my brief presentation today will uh, address some, if not all of these, and at least a method by which it can partly be addressed. Of course, I think the problems are too complex to have any one solution address all of them. The slides will just be placeholders so that you have something to focus on while I speak. But yes, the future indeed is fuzzy, the future is uncertain. And we heard of even the difficulty to predict what skills are going to be essential in uh, the coming years, the next two or three years. And therefore, you require uh, people to be creative and uh, find paths, not only for themselves, but for their organizations and uh, for their co-employees or colleagues. Now, what are the qualities that will make such pathfinders? One has to be creative. We heard that in the morning. One has to be reflective. I think I heard that adjective also. Agile, uh, because things are just changing so fast around us that uh, at the workplace, people are going to have to be agile uh, virtually every day of their lives. Brave, because decisions have to be taken which uh, will deal with matters which have never arisen before, questions which have not arisen before. Resilient, because you have to dig deep down and uh, draw upon your reserves, because failures will be frequent and will be uh, significant, but then one always gets over those failures by resilience. One has to be able to move into different uh, roles, address different challenges, and be collaborative at the workplace. And I believe uh, that the topic for uh, discussion today is one way by which we have, and more generally, many institutions around the world have helped address or helped organizations address such challenges. So we'll work, focus on the work integrated learning. The term work integrated learning is a little over 100 years old. It was coined in uh, uh, 1904 at the University of Cincinnati. And it was largely meant to address the process by which you get a college-going population industry ready. And uh, typically, this is accomplished by sending them to industry for varying periods of time, alternating with the periods on the campus. And that's something which many institutions around the world do, including my own, Bits Pilani, where I've been for the last 35 years. And just to give you an idea of the scale, and it's an important part, although that's not the focus of what I'm going to speak about today, that we place about 6,000 students um, in industry for structured internships, which is the responsibility of the institution. And uh, 3,000 of them for an eight-week internship and uh, another 3,000 plus for a 22-week internship. Now, the challenge we are now facing is this was done originally to uh, get our graduates to be industry ready. The challenge we are now facing is that uh, industry wants them to be ready when uh, they actually go for the internship. So the internship itself is no longer a stepping stone to the profession. It is expected to be something that the candidates are ready for when they come. So that's a general definition of work integrated learning. But today we will focus on work integrated learning 
in the specific context of addressing the continuing education and the skill gaps of employed professionals, which is something that we have been trying to address over the last five decades, and which I think is something that should be scaled up by efforts of industry, the government, as well as good educational institutions. So what is work integrated learning? As I said, um, the origins are in uh, moving the classroom to the industry for short periods of time. However, in the, the more less, I mean, more specific sense in which I'll be talking about work integrated learning today, it is actually the transformation of the workplace itself into the classroom. So we are talking about continuing education, which is delivered to working professional as an intentional part of their curriculum, they will be engaged in the workplace. So there will be a complete alignment between what they do at work and the kind of education that they are admitted to. It is a collaborative effort where uh, the university, the employer, and the employee will enter into a, a sort of an agreement where it is agreed that the education will benefit the employee as well as the employer and the education will reflect itself in increased efficiency and performance at the organization. And that's the intent of the work integrated learning experience. It is intended to be transformative at the workplace. So one of the fundamental uh, tenets is that an employee is also a full-time student. So we do not face the program differently for our uh, students in the work integrated learning programs. It does offer flexibility. You can slow down the pace if you so desire. But the expectation is that since the education is so closely integrated with the work, you will be able to do it at more or less the pace at which any student would normally do it who is doing it full time. And that's just because of the fact that your work is very closely intertwined and connected to the curriculum that you're going through as part of the program. The workplace is your laboratory. That doesn't mean that we do not have other laboratories, but the workplace gives you an opportunity to experiment something that you learn in the classroom on a continuous basis. And much of this activity actually leads to productive contribution to the group and to the organization as a whole. It is a formal education program, and therefore it is not like a training program which is sharp and very focused in imparting a particular skill. So the concept of work integrated learning is to ensure that the foundation is uh, very strong and enables you to be able to draw and apply concepts that you learn from a range of subjects in the context of the problems that you face at work. And so even as we do this, we also build the skills as required by the organization in the current times. What it does is to prepare the individual to solve ill-defined problems. An ill-defined problem is one where, first of all, you only have a bunch of observations from which you have to create a problem definition. And then there is no recipe for creating a solution to that problem. So you will apply the concepts that you learn in the classroom in ways that you have to figure out yourselves. And we have observed time and again from feedback from employees as well as employers that this happens very successfully. And this happens largely at the initiative of the individual, although it is supported by the institution and the faculty. The range, it has always been a held, widely held belief by our institution that uh, Generalists are quite often far more efficient at problem solving or complex problem solving than those who are very specifically skilled to address only specific areas. So our programs also cover not just foundational subjects, but even at the advanced levels they will cover or good work integrated learning will cover a range of subjects which will address the audience's need to be able to draw upon a variety of uh, skills in order to be able to address problems in the workplace, which are by their very nature ill-defined. There is no compromise on rigor. 
And that is because rigor is the only way you will build resilience and retention. Here I am using the word retention in multiple senses of the word. One is the retention of the employee in the organization, but also retention of uh, the student in the program. And uh, for the kind of programs that we run, we have an extraordinarily high success rate and that too in the novel duration, which tells us that people are able to draw upon their inner reserves and uh, successfully not just complete the programs, but also advance in their careers in their current organizations or beyond those. There is an Emphasis on experiential learning, as I said, the workplace is a laboratory, but increasingly over the last decade we have harnessed the power of technology and we have a number of remote and virtual lab possibilities. And I think this is something that uh, educational institutions and the government should take up in order to address the need for laboratories to not just uh, act as a training ground to test concepts but also to build on problem-solving skills. And that's something that we do uh, very, very extensively with our virtual laboratories, where uh, students have to work on extreme problems, which you cannot all the time create real situations of at the workplace. So you simulate the situations and find solutions. And I think this is a very significant part of our uh, experiential learning education. Of course, every program ensures that a significant time at the end of the program is spent on a capstone or a dissertation where the candidate will pick a problem which is a relevant problem to the organization and will have to apply whatever has been learned in the course of the program to solving that. And we have uh, many, many instances of innovative solutions resulting in uh, creative solutions and immense savings to the organization. And I think that's a very significant part of the work integrated learning. So to repeat, work integrated learning is an effort to provide a rigorous, strong foundation, broad, as well as deep education with a significant modicum of experiential learning to working professionals in domains aligned to their areas of work to ensure that not only do they develop the potential to go ahead in their careers, but even as they progress through their education, they are able to demonstrably increase their productivity and efficiency at the workplace. And uh, I will show you some statistics that will tell you that we've done reasonably well on this. This is a slide about the institution that I represent, Pitts Pilani. I dare say some of you might have heard of the institution. It's not very far from here. But of course, we are now spread across the globe. We have campuses in Pilani, Dubai, Goa, Hyderabad, Mumbai, and then this campus that I am here specifically to represent today, the Work Integrated Learning Programs. On our campuses, we have about 18,000 plus students, about 1,800 faculty, including regular and adjunct. We have about 65,000 campus alumni, many of them very distinguished. We are known for an institution, we have always been known as an institution uh, which is excelled in academics, but increasingly we are also a research focused institution. And you can see some of the indicators in terms of rankings. And a bit about the work integrated learning programs. As I said, we've do, been doing this for 50 years now. We have uh, over 100,000 alumni, that is people who have graduated from these programs. You will see that that's greater than the sum total of all our campus alumni. So you will also see that this is a method of education where industry partners with educational institutions. You don't prescribe curriculum to us. Uh, we may not listen to you. But if you partner with us, we will certainly factor what you tell us into our design of the curriculum. Uh, and it has an immense potential to address the skill needs that the nation faces, as well as uh, the improved performance that industry needs. And of course, it channels a lot back into the institution in terms of understanding of uh, challenges that need to be addressed at the academic institution. We are an institution of eminence. We were one of the 
six institutions uh, in the first lot of such, uh, you know, being declared by the Ministry of Education as institutions of eminence. And we have a history as a deemed to be university for uh, a little over, you know, close to 60 years, 58. And as an institution for a little over a century, we began as a small part shala about 115 years ago, 117 years ago. The last two slides are to give you a sense of the presence and impact of the work integrated learning programs. But please bear in mind the intention of the talk was to focus on work integrated learning as a concept. But this is just to tell you that uh, it, there is no sector which cannot be influenced by such an approach. We have a presence in all of these sectors. Of course, IT and ITES is our largest sector. But we have a significant presence in all of the other sectors. And uh, the last slide which is another way of measuring our uh, presence and impact. We have about 38, close to 40 programs, 42 plus years of uh, educating working professionals, 50 years of being in the space of work integrated learning, 90 plus corporate uh, clients or partners, 1100 plus faculty members, 35,000 enrollment, and 100,000 plus graduates. So that in a nutshell is work integrated learning. The bell has gone, so I will be happy to meet any of you outside and take any of your questions. No, sir, we can have the one question, the elusive one question, and sure. then we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. Anyone wanting to ask a question, you can raise a hand, that one question, and uh, the mic would come to you. Okay. Hi, uh, this is uh, Jyoti. I also come from the educational world uh, and I belong to India's first government skill university. So as you are saying that you are uh, having a model with industry. So um, uh, I know that uh, many industries or a lot of industries are working with you. So I just want to understand, you know, any challenge you are facing in this model? Uh, I mean, we, we face a number of challenges, right? Uh, so, since we are working with industry and since one of the questions that was referred to was the ability to predict the skill gap, predict the skills that are going to be important, so we are faced with the same challenge and we have to address it in the same way that corporates do. So what we do is to work with corporates and to work uh, with the consultants to identify uh, the markets that are growing and the areas that uh, skills are going to be required in and ensure that we don't develop a skilling program, ensure that we are able to adapt one of our formal education programs, because we do only formal education. We adapt one of our formal education programs such that it does offer a rigorous qualification to the candidate, but at the same time, it helps develop the skills which can be put immediately to use. So doing that is not easy. So what? So while I said, what is a professor of chemistry doing at a conference such as this? I don't do any chemistry. I do HR and I do finance. So I constantly have to see how to help people develop themselves. And of course, I also have to manage money. So that's one of the challenges. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for your attention.